from the black rock pied trying to dig out a warthog and there's a reason I'm not in infrared um, it is as we do with lions most time we don't need infrared on on the lions and the fact that they are, are digging up a hole um, we're not blinding any animals we're not affecting their behavior and of course lions are, are, are incredibly capable of dealing with light it actually helps them at night so they are busy digging out or trying to dig out a warthog now after the rain we've had this is the sands a lot softer so they, look how deep she's going in the hole. Look at that, look at that. <laughs> Just her bottom showing. There might be piglets in there. Now these are the three mothers from the Black Rock Pride. Now of course, warthogs have multiple bolt holes. So there's actually females on, if we go over to the right there, Seb, on another hole as well. Oh, my hat's in the way. You can see they're digging in. Now. Guys, I'm going to apologize. I'm going to, I'm going to have to move the car um, quickly so I can make sure I have comms with uh, final control. Which all it means is I'm, going to, I'm not going to disturb the lions. Um, I got a bit of breakup from Rebecca saying she's going to stick with us. Um, I'm just going to get a little bit higher on the hill so I guarantee you we've got comms with Rebecca. While the, while the lions are trying to... Um, dig out this warthog. Now there could be piglets in there, so be warned if they do they are successful It could be very very graphic for sensitive viewers Okay, Becca, can you try to talk to me? I just want to test my comms in this area to know whether I should stop or not Okay, I can hear Rebecca I, and it is it is quite broken, but I can still hear her enough um, to survive and you can see they've, they've dug quite a lot already. So I think what happened is the lions... What, what I think happened is that the lions were sitting with the cubs and, and, and they watched the warthogs go down this hole. And uh, now that they have seen them go down the hole, and especially after the rain, they're now trying to dig. Now, Rebecca uh, would like to do an action broadcast. So, yes, Rebecca... Um, what I will do is ask, once we've started the action broadcast, ask Seb to turn off the present light. Not yet, because otherwise I'm going to be covered in fruit chafers. <laughs> so, Rebecca, when you are ready. Welcome to everyone. We are with the Black Rock Pied, the three females that have nine cubs, and they are busy trying to dig a warthog out of a hole. And you will notice that I'm using a spotlight, a white light, and there's a very important reason I'm doing that, is lions are able to deal with the light, so we're not affecting the situation that's happening. So that's the reason I'm using white light, so we can see a bit more. So normally we'd use infrared light if they were stalking up to something. But we have the white light on now, because obviously the warthogs are under the ground. The lions are not affected at all by the light. By the way, I forgot, my name is Brent Sebastian as a camera, and we're live from the Maasai Mara in Kenya. Now what I am going to do is ask Sebastian to focus in on the lions. I'm also going to ask him to turn off the light that, um, once we're on, on the lions, that, that is on me, because after the rain, we are... Oh, there we go! There we go! Something happened! Oh! Now, that amount of dust that just, just shot out there, it... It's an artifact. It's not... It, it's actually an artifact. It's not... It's not a warthog they're after. They're after one of the most seldom seen animals in Africa. It's an artifact. You can actually hear it beating its tail and digging. I might be wrong. But it sounds to me like there could be an artifact down there. And the lions are getting very close to get that reaction. Now, if they go down the hole again, you'll actually notice that that earth spews out. Something is digging, trying to dig down away from the lions at an absolute rate of knots. Well, I suppose you can't do a rate of knots underground. There we go. Let's see what happens. There we go. It is a warthog. Oh! Hold on. They've just got it. 
Now, sensitive viewers, the screaming is quite bad. It's a big male warthog. The female is now going for the, the throat grip. There we go. She's now got the got the throat. Now she the reason one of the reasons predators go for that throat. I know the sound is really disturbing. Is 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 to tr try shut down that screaming so it doesn't attract unwanted lions or hyenas. I know for sensitive viewers this is this is very difficult, and and a warthog screams are are very 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 hard to listen to. But fortunately, it seems like the lioness has got hold of the esophagus and she is going to suffocate it now. And those, those terrible signs will stop. So I think we arrived at the most opportune time. The lions had been digging for at least an hour to get that deep and the only reason they're digging into there is because of the rain normally the sand would be too hard but we had massive thunder showers today now this is quite gruesome the lions are starting to feed on the warthog while it is still alive oops sorry sorry i got a bug in my hair i'm just going to move the car quickly um so do apologies sensitive viewers please look away go grab a cup of tea um, this is very gruesome. The animal is still alive. The lions are, st are starting to feed on it, but this is Africa. This is nature at its most raw, and we are just witnessing something that would happen even if we, are, we were not here. Now, those screams might attract the male lions to the situation. Okay, thankfully, it, unfortunately, I'm sorry, I thought the warthog was dead. It is not dead. But you must realize this animal is in such a state of shock that it's probably not feeling anything. Obviously, it is still screaming in distress, but it is in such a state of shock. The lionesses at the back are already into its stomach. They've probably already eaten its kidneys and its liver, which are high-nutrient uh, items full of iron. Here we go. I think it's, it's not long. As I said, for sensitive viewers, this is very difficult. I do apologize. But this is what happens out here on a daily basis in Africa. Now, these three females have nine little cubs that they have to feed and have to produce milk for. So this warthog will be an incredible source of nutrients for them to be able to, to feed their little cubs. So we do have a few questions. Sorry, I, I just didn't catch them there. Rebecca, can you go again? Esther would like to know, would they bite the throat in order for it not to suffer? Esther, unfortunately, lions do not have thoughts like that. They are instinctive beings. They bite the throat to stop the scream, not for suffering, but to stop, stop it attracting other predators, hyenas, uh, possibly nomadic male lions, or even their same coalition of male lions, because these lionesses, and you can see they're really tucking in, they're eating as fast as possible, because if the males heard that in this area. They'll come and take the kill from the females. Now again, this is not for sensitive viewers. This is live from Kenya. This is live from the African bush. And this is lions, what they've been doing for the last 500,000 years. The animal is dead. It is not suffering anymore. Um, and I don't think it's been suffering for quite some time due to the fact that it's been in shock. And there we go. So there's one female still holding on to the throat. I 
I think the animal is dead. She's just making doubly sure it's dead. Now, a big male warthog like this is a very dangerous animal for, for lions. They have incredibly sharp teeth. Um, their tusks, their bottom tusks, known as tushes, are as sharp as razor blades. So they are able to actually inflict incredible damage to lions. So they have to be very careful when... Oh, lioness is looking up, and I said that screaming might attract male lions. Let me just have a quick look with the spotlights around. So, so far, luckily for the girls, no sign of male lions. Now, a side would like to know, is it true, is, is their bite force proportional to the size of prey? I would say to a degree, Hassad, and also the bite force depends on, on the fight that is given by the prey. So with prey that fights more, such as a buffalo or warthog, uh, they will generally bite a lot harder. Now those legs kicking is not the animal alive, that is just its nerves kicking through. Um, Inside. So when something fights more, the bite force will be more um, than something like small like an Impala or a Thompson's Gazelle that with one bite you've crushed the spinal column. But with something as big as a warthog, now a big male warthog can weigh nearly as much as a lioness, up to about 110 kilograms. A lioness only weighs between 120 and 130. And with those sharp teeth, it is a very, very dangerous prospect for these girls. But they have succeeded here. And it has taken a lot of hard work. Now, some of you are wondering whether we've interfered in the situation. Those lions were digging in that hole when we arrived. And we have just watched what they were doing already. Berta was or Gerda was wondering why was the one not eating. She was making sure it was dead. She's now 100% sure it's dead. And she is now licking and she's about to start feeding. There we go. As she goes. Now, a, lion, a lion's tongue is like really, really rough sandpaper. If it had to lick your arm, it would actually take the skin off. So what she was doing, and she's doing it again just in case. Uh, because a warthog is such a dangerous animal, she's trying to make sure that it is absolutely dead before she starts feeding. Now, as I said, it's quite a good meal for lions. It's, it's, it's over 200 pounds of meat. Taryn, this is a very interesting question, and I'm, I've been wondering the same thing myself. And Taryn is wondering, will they bring the cubs? Now, we are only probably 300 meters from where the cubs are, and they have nine cubs. See, there we go. She, she's just worried the danger the warthog poses. She's going back onto the throat, even though I'm very sure it's, it, it, it's very dead. So I'm going to apologize, Seb. I'm just going to put the spotlight where I can hold it more steady. Sure. There we go. How's that? Yeah. So now we're looking at those tusks. So you see the big tusks at the top. It's the bottom tusks that actually are the dangerous ones um, because they rub against the top tusks and become incredibly sharp, almost like a razor blade. So there we go. She's now decided that this is very dead. She's going to start feeding. Uh, so now it would have been any of the lionesses if they had been the first on the dangerous part of the lion. Any three of them would have done exactly as she did and, and gone for that throat hold while the others continue to feed from the back. And I know this sounds horrible, but lions have no idea uh, about suffering and pain. They are instinctive animals. That meal is going to provide for their cubs and they don't worry about the warthog's progeny or, or, or the warthog's life. This is life for them. Being able to feed on this animal will ensure that they are able to pass on their genetic line because they're going to be able to produce milk for their cubs and their cubs are very young still under three months old and there are nine of them now you, we might see some aggression between the lionesses shortly because lions forget their manners when they're at dinner tables and they will often beat each other up quite severely and that's why when they're not eating they have incredibly close social interactions with interactions with each other and that's a fir to affirm the pride bonds so far it's been quite civil between these three girls, but that could change in an absolute instant. Once the food gets a little bit smaller, or as I say, there's a little bit less food to go around. Okay, what I'm going to do, Seb, let's go back to me quickly. I'm just going to reposition the car quickly. Now, the lionesses are looking, and that's why I want to just check with the spotlight. Um, and that warthog squeals might have attracted 
the Black Rock boys, the two dominant males in this area. So they keep looking behind me. So I just want to use a spotlight to see if those males are coming in. And what I'm going to do is also use the headlight on the lions so we don't have as much jerky hand as I have. Um, I hope that works for you, Sebastian. How is that? Is that good? Yes, thank you. There we go. And this also gives me the ability to check around while you're looking at what the lions are doing to see if any of the males or other lions are potentially coming in. Now, it's very unlikely we're going to get any nomadic males near here because this is the core of the Black Rock's territory. And those Black Rock boys, um, the one-eyed bruiser and the beautiful dark-maned male will protect this area more more so than they will the peripheries of their territory because they have these three females that have nine little cubs that are carrying their genetic information to ensure that their legacy will last for a lot longer. Now, of course, those squeals might also attract hyenas. Now, again, as I say to to those of you who are sensitive, um, this is a fresh kill. There will be a lot of blood. Um, so be warned if you are sensitive to these type of things, please go get a cup of tea. But just remember that this warthog in dying has provided the mothers of nine little cubs an incredible amount of protein where they will be able to produce milk. Sebastian, sorry, can I ask you to turn off the little light behind oh, me? Sorry, 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 there's a lot of bugs yeah. around tonight. We've had a lot of rain. Um, John is wondering, where are the male lions? So this is the core section of their territory. The male lions will spend a lot of time here, but they will move vast distances from here, patrolling the edges of their territory, making sure no other males can sneak in. Um, because if another male lion comes across the cubs, and there are nine of them, probably 400 meters from us, hidden in the rocks. If another male lion came across them, he would absolutely kill them. And so they make sure the boundaries of their territory are very safe. So the females are able to hunt in the, the core of their territory. If they are close by, being a male lion, there's a reason there's a, there's a cliche called the lion share. Uh, if, if, if they are close by, they will come in and chase the ladies off and take the lion's share. But it looks like the boys are out on patrol and uh, far enough away that they did not hear the squealing of this poor pig and they have not rushed in. They could still be on their way. You never know. Remember, this is 100% live from the middle of the African bush. We're in one of the most remote areas you can get in the Maasai Mara with one of the most spectacular prides and definitely one of my favorite prides of lions, the Black Rock Pride. We're about halfway between one of the main camps and the Sand River Gate. So we are only about three or four, no, no I, I exaggerate. So we're about, we're about a kilometer and a half from Tanzania. As I say, we're right in a remote core of the, a corner of the Maasai Mara. Now, it looks like the ladies are going to continue munching on their... I thought I heard something behind me. Um, they're going to continue to munch on their bacon for dinner. Um, and it doesn't look like we're going to get any more interaction from the males or what coming in. But you never know what happens. As I say, we are live from one of the most remote areas in the world, the Maasai Mara in Kenya. And we have just witnessed something that very few people get to see. Lions digging out a warthog and catching it. This has been absolutely incredible. My name is Brent and my cameraman is my good friend Seb. And we've been very, very privileged to be able to share this with you even though there were some very gory and difficult parts to watch this is nature and this is what happens on a day-to-day -day basis in africa now of course you never know when we might go live again because we're going to be out following lions leopards or cheetahs or even hyenas any fascinating things we come across in the african bush keep an eye out for that go live notification because you might see me again in a short little while